Hey folks and welcome. This is going to be a slightly different guide and is actually going to be a crash course masterclass as it were on Affliction Warlock. We're going to try and condense everything you need to know about the spec within the next 10 minutes. So without any further delay, let's get into the talents. And first off, we'll start with the single target. Now Affliction Warlocks have two choices in terms of their single target build. You have the dread touch and haunted soul build as you can see on screen or you have the malevolent visionary version of dark glare now i'll show both of these specs but the crux of this is going to be down to whether or not you have the class trinket and whether or not you want something that is going to be more cooldown reliant in your two minutes by utilizing the strength of dark glare with spells of Noltharian trinkets as well as obviously call of dominance or you can play the haunted soul build which is much more consistent throughput damage where you can utilize chromatic essence passives and the vessel of shadows from the amalgamations but the dark glare change not particularly drastic if we just load it up you can see that the points shift we take the three points out of Seized Vitality and Haunted Soul to put two into Malevolent Visionary and one to pick up Soul Rot for the extra dot. This means that you end up having, a, again, a bit like old Red Paladin, you have kind of like a one minute go with smaller cooldowns and then you obviously have your big one every two minutes with your Dark Glare as it lines up with Soul Rot. Not really going to touch too much on the class tree, because for the most part it is very locked in you only really have two points maybe three at the push that you can play around with you could pull out soul burn if you really want to but soul burn is just really nice quality of life and the defensive benefit of health stone is also very very nice so main takeaways grimmer of synergy soul conduit along with demonic inspiration wrathful minion Sagarai Technique and Socrates Guile. They're all your damaging based class ability talents or your class talents. And the rest is all utility or defensive, such as Sweet Souls into Dark Pact into Frequent Donor. That kind of thing. For the M plus side of things and the large AoE elements, you again have two builds. Again, this kind of does feed into a lot about whether or not you have the class trinket from Neltharion or the kind of play style that you enjoy. I personally run a Doom Blossom and Grim Reach build. This is fantastic for those bursty moments in AoE where you can see upwards of 800,000 DPS and pushing a million in the right circumstances. All in all, it's a very, very good playstyle although there is the option again if you want something that is a little bit more consistent and less reliant on having a priority target because the thing is with the change to doom blossom and the way that it now works is you benefit greatly from having one target that you're going to want to priority dot with your unstable affliction and your haunt such as the war scourges in brackenhide hollow and then just detonating all the small things after that because doom blossom now ha means that when your seed of corruption deals damage to a target suffering from unstable affliction they explode dealing damage this massively spirals especially in larger pulls when you also feed into things like soul flame so you can end up with those very very bursty moments i might post edit put a clip here of me hitting that near 800k dps and that's without bloodlust and things. Um, only caveat being I did have an augmentation of Oka with me. But we'll go into that. The alternative, if you want a more sustained AoE play style, again, if you don't have the class trinket to sync into this, you can play Doom Blossom and Haunted Soul. This allows you to benefit greatly from the increased dot damage that haunted soul provides because obviously haunted soul turns your haunt into an aoe damage increase for all your dots while still utilizing doom blossom for damage if you really don't like playing with doom blossom though and you want to further amplify your aoe you do have the additional option of coming down into this particular build which is your haunted soul and your dark harvest dark harvest means that your soul rot is actually going to come back 
sooner because you have Soul Eater's Gluttony, so your Unstable Affliction reduces the cooldown on Soul Rot, and then when you do use Soul Rot, much like in Shadowlands, for those of us that have played that, each target affected by your Soul Rot increases your hate, Haste and Crit by 2.5% for 8 seconds. Obviously, that stacks up to 10% Haste and 10% Crit while you're going into your Burst, as it were. And on average, you'll be able to line this up with every other Vile Taint, because the cooldown goes from a minute to somewhere in the region of about 25 to 30 seconds, depending on how lucky you are. Um, I personally average about 30 seconds on a Sol Ross, um, so it doesn't quite line up with Vile Taint, especially now that I have Foresight, but, you know, play as you will, hopefully you enjoy it. Now, in terms of the rotation, Affliction is really fortunate in that because it's a dot place class, you don't have a traditional rotation. You have a priority list of order. You have, obviously, your dots, Agony, Siphon Life, Corruption, Unstable Affliction, Horns, Vile Taint, which is technically a cooldown with the tier set. A short cooldown, but a cooldown nonetheless. You then have Soul Rot if you're talented into it. And then you obviously have your Dark Glare and any trinkets that you may use. Now, due to the way that the talents work out with having Shadows Embrace as well, what ends up happening is you basically want to maintain all of your dots. You want to keep them rolling. You want to ensure that Unstable Affliction doesn't drop off your main target. Haunt, you want to try and refresh within the last three seconds because it has a 15 second cooldown and the duration is for 18 seconds but you do have to bear in mind haunt has a travel time going on from that you have obviously agony which is our shard generator and our largest dealing dot per global you then have corruption and siphon life siphon life does the lowest amount of damage per global of the three dots however it does feed into the spec and helps considerably when you start taking into account how things like our dark glare work regardless how you play especially if you are playing level and visionary though this is further amplified because you're wanting damage per dot but you want to maintain all of these and then the other thing that you need to remember to maintain is shadow embrace so shadow bolt and drain soul apply shadow embrace increasing the damage dealt to the target by three percent for 16 seconds stacking up to three times you basically want to maintain this at three stacks with drain soul it's very easy to get to three stacks and then what you want to do is you just want to make sure that it doesn't drop off. So you will be weaving in your dots. You'll be Malefic Rapturing to spend your shards to make sure that you don't overcap. And then just weaving in Drain Souls to maintain the buff or debuff that Shadow Embrace applies. Which then allows you to maximize the damage of your spec. Hopefully this has given you a quick insight into Affliction and how it plays now. If you want a much more in-depth guide about it, please do comment below, and I will see you all in the next one. Take care, folks, and have a good one.